Okay folks, it's Stephen here from TCDS Group and what I want to speak about very quickly in this part of the video is about company cards, company lock-ins and company lockouts. Now, if you're not aware of what a company card is, I just happen to have one here. So a company card is a yellow card, guys, and it's like a security lock for your vehicle unit regarding your digital tech graphs. So we are dealing here at the office. Um, some of our guys or support staff are, you know, we've taken on a lot of work from a lot of new customers coming on board, which is great. However, we have also been left with a lot of uh, crap from other providers and we're going in the fleets there of you know 30 40 50 vehicles that have never been locked in so the company card guys is where you lock into the vehicle unit that allows you first of all the main point of it is that it gives you a period of time when you lock in to when you lock out you're stating that you own the vehicle and the operational activities of that vehicle from your lock-in until your lockout so it's a security key for letting us go in letting us get the data people logging so I just have a visitor here coming now they've destroyed a bit of my video here but now that I'm, I'm live I'm vlogging live look at this here this is how you spoil the staff serve this time all right bud yeah welcome back okay folks <clears throat> I want to slip this into the video somewhere along the line because during the weekend, as we were down in Sligo dealing with Agents and Associates program, we stayed overnight in the Radisson Blue Hotel in Sligo. And it's been the first time since lockdown that the hotels have opened, especially in the south of Ireland. So I suppose I want to give a bit of a summary of what way the hotels are at the moment because we stay in a lot of hotels, you know, we're never off the road um, between Ireland and England, all over the place, we have to, you know, have accommodation. So when we went into the hotel, uh, yes, very professional, that all the control measures in place and the hand sanitizer and all this. Um, but what we did find is that the hotel was very, I'm gonna say empty, and I don't mean because of a lack of bookings, I mean empty because they seemed to have everything spaced out. Now, for example, when we went into the restaurant, the restaurant had, I would say, half of the tables taken out of it to comply with the social distancing uh, between each, each table. And first of all, I'm going to say it was brilliant to the point of if you're having a, a personal time, if you're having a, a private meeting, for example, you have nobody right beside you over here and everything. Um, but from a business point of view, from the hotel, the amount of trade they would be losing will be absolutely colossal. It will be unreal. Now, on another positive with that, what you also see them doing is the service. For example, when they come in, they're very, very quick at cleaning the table. They're very, very quick at getting you seated. Uh, they're very quick at getting the food out. And everybody's sitting there. They enjoy their meal. They enjoy um, the dessert. But they're conscious. They know now, listen, we have to get up and move on out because someone else is booked in in the next slot. So massive differences from the hotels to compare it the way it used to be. In relation to the leisure facilities, the likes of the pools, um, the gym, the spa. We were in the gym and every second machine was cordoned off right, with a big yellow bit of tape around it. So you were very, very limited how many people was allowed into the gym at the time. The air conditioning was not running, which made it um, a lot more difficult. And as I said, they had the machines, whether it was the weight machines, uh, you know, treadmills, rowing machines, whatever it was, it was all cordoned off every second one. So it was very, very well controlled. Um, and then in the swim pool as well, they had a very, very, everything was gone. Anything you, that you sat on outside was gone. You had to put all of your, your clothing, um, you know, your robes, your towels uh, into a basket. You couldn't, you couldn't hang them over chairs. You couldn't leave them any rest. This here basket was solely for you. Another thing that I found interesting was the weights. Uh, the likes of dumbbells and free weights. When you were finished with them, you had to go outside and put them into um, like a yellow square that they had built. And they take the, the weight and they sanitize it and clean it and then leave it back. So if you were trying to do the likes of a, you know, you and someone else was trying to do like a, you know, a drop set, it would be very difficult because the second person would have to wait until the weights were, were cleaned and racked again. So very, very interesting guys. I think it's, um, it's I'm not gonna say over the top because obviously we have to control this at all times. But it is good to see the hotels and leisure facilities starting to open up again and put the control measures in place. And then we can control and monitor it as we go along. But anyway, I want to slip that into our next vlog, which is vlog number four. Just to detail that, as I said, I would in vlog number three. So that's all.
Yeah folks, so we are down here at one of the marinas in County Fermanagh and it's not often we get an opportunity to meet one of our clients here. We have a client that is coming down to unload two cruisers and uh, we have to go out and do an SOP risk assessment for them and a safe operating procedures documentation for them for um, all the risk assessments and health and safety. So we'll be stuck everywhere guys from manufacturing plants to aviation to shipping to boating to you name it. Myself who is a massive um, jet ski fan, water sport fan, it's it's great to be out here at times when you get an opportunity on this beautiful marina here. And this is actually Kerry Bridge so the guy's going to drop into drop in two cruisers and we're going to pick it up from here and we'll also do telegraph analysis for him um, not that he is a new client as well but it's more to get the lock in his new vehicle his brand new S series scanner that hopefully we'll get on camera if we remember we always say we'll do this but then we'll be that busy that um, we can't forget about it so anyway litters Okay guys, so it is approximately, well it's actually exactly 1.21.39, so it's uh, 25 to 10 at night and I was working in the office late anyway and now I've been called out to um, deployment for um, an accident or a collision. So I'm going to have to go out and examine the vehicle first of all, uh, I think it's another serious, serious accident, serious collision. So. That's a part, a big part of the job that we do that we don't document that much. You know, people are aware of our accident collision investigation unit and um, ourselves as, you know, forensic vehicle examiners and we, we do a lot of work and that's what our, all our background has been for a long, long time. But we don't publicize, you know, much of it. And the plan for the YouTube channel is to publicize a lot of the aftermath of it, uh, the psychological profile that goes on and also a lot of the, you know, the, the, the professional counseling that the likes of ourselves, um, accident collision investigators, are supposed to go through as well. Because that's an interesting bit of it. Um, so yeah, we might have to do a mapping. We don't know what the story is yet. I just know I have to go right now and be there right now. So to try and keep the vlogs accurate with what we do, um, we can't show any of it, but hopefully we'll be fit to give a bit of a debrief later on. <laughs> Okay guys, so it is 27 minutes past midnight and um, we are about to go in and do uh, an unannounced health and safety visit to um, one of Northern Ireland's largest uh, road transport, road freight companies. And uh, why, I, why I love doing this sort of work and why I love working with companies that want to do this all the time is because it shows the math competence level of management. And it shows, you know, we go in and we do day shift, middle shift, night shifts. It's all um, unannounced visits. Nobody knows we're coming. We don't even tell the management really a time or date that we're coming. But, you know, they book us in for this and they plan this. And this is one of the major, major um, things that I always have to highlight when we talk about competence and good repute of an operator. So although it's going to be 1 o'clock, 1 a.m. in the morning before we do this, we'll be there approximately four hours probably and we will uh, assess the whole situation and we will then you know write up the report to what has to be done we'll step in if there's anything major we'll step in if there's anything dangerous um but as i say guys on this particular company we've been we've been doing work for this company for a long time and they don't like putting any social media up around it which we fully fully accept fully agree with and um, there's absolutely no problem with that so we will try and um touch base after or maybe in the middle of it or during it 
But anyway, guys, that's a part of our service, whether it's fleet inspections, whether it's um, continuity inspections of vehicles, uh, a service that we call yard checkpoint, where we'll go in and you know stop the vehicle, check the vehicle, check the trailer, check the load, check the driver's hours, check the tack graphs, and you know, we always get something. So again, from a lot of investigative work that we do and a lot of a lot of work that I've been involved with from a law enforcement side. Not sure if you can see me here guys with the light, but um one of the things that always comes up is the question of good repute and professional competence and when you work for operators that and companies now this is businesses of all kind we do this sort of work for and they cannot be expected to you know keep the finger on the pulse of over you know a couple of hundred people you know it just can't be done so the using the services like ourselves and um, we have this happening here in northern ireland tonight and um, we have the same, I think, at 4 a.m. in the morning in, um, well, I can't mind where it is, I think it's Telford or, or Manchester, I can't mind where the guys are. And then we have the same on Saturday night um, in Carlisle, and then we have the same on Sunday afternoon um, in Wales. So, you know, we do this all the time, guys, day in, day out, and it's a great control mechanism. It's a great risk management. So tomorrow morning, I am touching up, touching base with another um one of our staff on an early continuity check of vehicles um up near limavadi up, up around, around uh, balamina and we're just short staffed a wee bit so i'm going to go up and help him out doing the examination of vehicles and every time we do this other company we always find issues and what we find is the issues with the weekend uh you know work the weekend subcontractors so they get us in to do a continuity inspection continuity examination of the vehicles we look at operators license we look at drivers and tachographs and um we look at load security so anyway we'll hopefully touch base later on as i say it's now half past midnight and we're going to get a wee bit of a wee bit of fuel the whole place is redundant okay guys so we are just Landing on site here, um, getting our equipment ready and our tablets and our, our software. So we will touch base now in a wee, about maybe an hour or so, two hours, and give an update on how the unannounced visits is going here for our health and safety unannounced um, audit. And yeah, we'll see if the crack is an update you later on. Okay, folks, so it is now. Two, three, half three, half three in the morning, and um, we just finished up having safety unannounced visit um, for one of our large operators here in Northern Ireland. And uh, the evening before, we were called out an accident job, so it's now Friday night, and we're trying to document as much as we can to show people what we do and how we do it and why we do it and why we have to do it. But again, when you go to these places, you will detect issues, um, you know, that. You will detect issues that uh, control measures can be put in place. However, you have to put a lot of um, thought and a lot of enforcement into it as well. So that's the only way to do your health and safety right. You know, a lot of risk assessments, a lot of health and safety is done by ticking boxes with absolutely nobody on the ground whatsoever. So we go into places and they do maybe a risk assessment or a health and safety statement. Um, policy uh, procedures um, method statement they do all this sitting from from a desk you know in an office and as an accident collision investigator and expert witness you know for years I've I've used that knowledge to to just rip people apart because you cannot doesn't it can't be done that way so when you go into say a distribution center at three o'clock in the day well there's going to be no activity you go there at seven o'clock at night eight o'clock at night ten o'clock at night now it's absolutely flat out then you go in at two three o'clock in the morning and it's just ridiculous the amount of trailers coming in maybe from running two three forklifts during the day to maybe running 15 16 forklifts at night or in a middle shift so that's the way it has to be done guys and um that's what our health and safety division do uh, we have some top of the range health and safety officers um, and then we have a guy out tonight doing forklifts for a large distribution company again in Belfast. So I've covered his shift and me and him will swap over tomorrow again. So anyway guys, for all your protection and support, you know what to do down below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, leave a comment if you wish. 
And for all your protection support, give us a shout to info at tctsgroup.com. So I am going to bed. Okay folks, so it is now Saturday um, afternoon and we're just finishing up with a number of clients here but what I want to show you is just to have my technical assistant here, Ben, with me and just flick up there a wee second so this here is the likes of our um, you know, compliance eye software to send out to our guys and just flick it on the next page mate and on up, flip on up. So, for example, there's a couple of them sitting in England, or it doesn't matter where they are, whether it's, you know, Spain, uh, Germany, Berlin, any of the place we've been. So this just allows them to do a live, it just allows them to do um, a live uh, report. So they go in, they do whether it's vehicle examination, whether it's training, uh, whether it's hidden safety, uh, random inspections, audits, whether it's transport compliance audits, whatever it is, it allows the guys then to take evidence, photographic evidence of any issues that they have. Um, they do a, an electronic report, which is sent then to their, ex, you know, to the operator themselves, and it can be done any time at any, you know, any location throughout throughout the world. It's a global, it's a global um, uh, network just through the internet, you know. But where the big thing is, is the likes of the third party external providers. So we had a guy last night who got two safety inspections done um, in a company, I think outside London. He's a Northern Ireland operator and um, he, he just had to get them done and he was fit to go into the portal in through his link. We give access to the third party provider. They use air standard um, safety inspection sheets, which are tried and tested obviously to the standard that we want them to. Then the photographic evidence is put straight up onto the portal and everybody can access it. That goes through their dashboard and tells them whether they're compliant or non-compliant. So that's just an example here. All right, bud. Yeah. Okay, folks, we are going to end the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, like, share, leave a comment. And as you can see here, we have a bit of beautiful scenery down here in County Fermanagh again. But this particular vlog, guys, we covered, um, it was only a couple of days in the life, and we covered the the likes of the COVID situation regarding hotels where we had to stay in whilst we conducted our agents and associates um, event. We documented a wee bit of that. We might have a bit of phone footage that we'll stick into it as well. But the control measures are very stringent and you know, it, you, you do know there's a difference. You definitely do notice the difference, especially in a hotel environment. Um, we went from that then on to out on site with a couple of clients. I think then we covered being called out to an accident, we done a unannounced health and safety visit as well during the week. I think it was a midnight one or 1 a.m. unannounced visit. So yeah, a lot of stuff in the pipeline, guys. Hopefully you liked the vlog. Leave a comment down below on anything you might want to see. And as we go forward, we'll try and get a bit more footage out on site. We have to be very, very mindful that we do ask permission um, of anywhere that we are out on site. And if we're going in from an investigation point of view, or maybe an issue regarding compliance, or a serious issue regarding tachographs, or vehicle examination, well then we won't post it up, or we won't show the company that we're in with. Just out of a bit of respect. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been vlog four, I think. Anyway, that is all.